Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to uh, the Let Us Reason uh, video series. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is an apologetic series, and uh, I am so excited that I ha launched this particular series with my dear brother, Sam Shamon, who's with me here in studio. And we've been going through really what we call the Tawheed Dilemma. And the reason why we did that is we wanted to refute the idea that according to supposedly the doctrine of Tawheed, Allah of the Quran is one in essence and one in person. So far, we have proved that according to the Quran, <laughs> according to the Quran alone, Allah has other partners like the Holy Spirit, for instance, and Jesus in this case as well. Right. So today we're going to talk about uh, the virgin birth and the sinlessness of Christ. So right. Welcome aboard. Glory to Jesus Christ. I thank the Lord for giving me this opportunity to be with you, to glorify you. the name of our <clears throat> God and Savior Jesus, the Father's beloved, and the power of the Holy Spirit. And again, we trust the Spirit to fill us, to do justice to these topics for the glory of Christ. <clears throat> now, what we're trying to do in these series is to show, like you said, the Quran, not Islamic theology, the Quran doesn't teach Tawheed, and the Quran presents a contradictory, if not confusing, picture regarding issues such as the person of Christ. <clears throat> because in one breath, the Quran wants to say that Jesus is simply a human servant of Allah, but at the same time, it says things about Jesus that elevates him to divine status, <clears throat> essentially co-equal with Allah, even at the same time subject to him. Now, why do I want to talk about the virginal conception and birth of Christ? Because that's going to pose a dilemma, a problem for the Muslims because of what the Quran says <clears throat> regarding Allah not having a son. But first, let's look at the passage. Let's go to chapter 3, verse 71. As the Lord guides us by His Spirit <clears throat> and clears, uh, clears my throat. And we're going <clears throat> to see it right now on the screen. Yep. Now, notice what it says here in 347. It says, Lord, this is Mary speaking Correct. to the angels. The Quran says that a group of angels came announced to Mary that she's going to conceive and give birth to the Messiah, Jesus. Because in the previous session, we saw that Allah gave her glad tidings of a word from him, 345, whose name is the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary. Ismuhu, Ismuhu, which Correct. is masculine, even though kalimat is feminine. That's right. You elaborated on that in the previous session. Correct. Now, she asks a logical question. <clears throat> she's not married. She's a virgin, a chaste virgin. She says, how shall I have a son seeing no mortal has touched me? Pay attention to that language. How shall I have a son seeing no mortal has touched me? Even so, God said, God creates what he will. When he decrees a thing, he does but say to it be and it is. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> it's easy for Allah to cause you to conceive and give birth to a child without sexual intercourse. After all, Allah is the one who created the entire creation and spoken into existence from nothing. So a virginal conception of birth, piece of cake. That's basically what it's saying. So in saying this, it's pretty much agreeing with the biblical teaching that the blessed mother of our Lord Jesus conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and gave birth to her blessed, glorious son while a chaste virgin sexually. Now let's go to the other reference that touches upon Jesus' virginal conception and birth. Chapter 19 of the Quran, verses 16 to 21. Chapter 19, verse 16, 21. It's a long passage. And here it is in front of us. Now, it's long, but again, <clears throat> I'm going to read it <clears throat> so that people can follow the train of thought. Mentioned in the book Mary, Maryam, when she withdrew from her people to an eastern place and she took a veil apart from them, then we sent unto her our spirit, there again, spirit, we already discussed the significance, significance of this, that presented himself to her a man without fault. She said, I took, take refuge in the all-merciful from thee, if thou fearest God. He said, I am but a messenger, Rasul, apostle, come from thy Lord to give thee a boy most pure. We're going to revisit that language, boy most pure. As you know the Arabic better than I can imagine. It's Ghulamin Zakian, Zakian, Zakian That's correct, pure, yeah. holy, <clears throat> faultless son. We'll revisit that a little later. Notice the response again. She said, how shall I have a son whom no mortal has touched, neither have I been unchaste. How can I get pregnant and give birth? I haven't had any sex with any man, and I am chaste. Response again, he said, even so thy Lord has said, easy is that for me, and that we may appoint him, Jesus, ayat unto mankind, and a mercy from us, it is a thing decreed. So in both chapter 19 and chapter 3, we have the Quran affirming the virginal conception and birth of Jesus Christ. Now, you may be wondering why I keep saying birth. Because someone can say 
She conceived as a virgin, but she didn't remain a virgin because she married Joseph and had intercourse before she gave birth to Christ. The Quran, in agreement with the Bible, teaches she had no sexual intercourse whatsoever from conception to the time she gave birth to the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and interestingly, the Quran doesn't even know that Mary was betrothed to Joseph. No mention of Joseph. That's right. No mention of the betrothal. And this may be interesting to people from, let's say, a Catholic or Orthodox or one of these traditional Christian backgrounds. One of the names of Mary in Islam is Al-Batul, meaning the virgin. That's right. Because in Islamic tradition, she remained a virgin. They affirmed the perpetual virginity of Mary. So not only did she conceive and give birth to Christ while a virgin, she remained a virgin throughout her entire earthly life. Now, with that said, <clears throat> why is this passage Astonishing. Do you remember what Mary said? Supposedly said, because again, as we stated in previous shows, we do not believe the Quran is the actual word of Allah, meaning the true God. I keep saying Allah, forgetting that for most people, Allah is not the term they would use for God. That's right. But if you're speaking Arabic, that's the only term you'd use even for the God of the Bible. We don't believe the Quran is the true word of the true God, nor do we believe that the Quran contains the actual conversations of the prophets of Mary or Jesus. But with that said, Notice the response in 347 and in 19, verse 20 is, How can I have a son, seeing no man has touched me? You yeah. know what's astonishing about that? And, and we can show the slide one more time uh, <clears throat> and uh, for, for yeah, if you want to yeah, follow so it. You notice it? It's, it's bold in there, right? There it is. How shall I have a son whom no man, no mortal has touched? Right? So she's asking the question, how can I have a child? I don't, you know, have a husband. I'm not sexually active, so the assumption is she can only have a child through sexual intercourse if she procreates a child that's right. through the union of a male and female. Why is that astonishing? Because that's the very objection Muhammad gave in chapter 6, verse 101, as to why his God cannot have a son. In chapter 6, verse 101, it says, and I'm referring, I'm paraphrasing the Yusuf Ali translation, wonderful originator of the heavens and the earth, how can he have a son seeing he has no consort? Sound familiar? Yeah, <laughs> that's what Mary was saying. But what did Allah say to Mary? Oh, that's easy for me. You don't need to have sex. You don't need to have a man. A man doesn't need to get you pregnant. All I need to do is say be and you'll get pregnant. So why is it that Mary can conceive a child without sexual intercourse and have a true son, but Allah Almighty cannot have a son unless it's through sexual <clears throat> union with a consort yeah i mean it? it's it's definitely a weakness on the god of islam's side supposedly yeah. he can't do things that are easy for others yeah for to do. he can do it for a mere yeah. mortal but he can't have a son unless he has sexual intercourse now this entails another problem since the quran is assuming that you have to have a father and mother to have a child and since mary conceived by allah through the spirit without sexual intercourse, that means if I apply this chronic logic. Because then Allah is the father. You got, yeah, because remember, you cannot have a child without a father or mother because that's pretty much the logic of 6101. That's, I'm, go, I'm going with the logic of the Quran. I cannot have a son unless I have a consort, right? So in Muhammad's mind, to be someone's son, the only way you can be truly someone's son is if that person in some sense <clears throat> gave you your life, whether through sexual intercourse or by some other means, there's a sense in which a person has to be responsible for you receiving life. Well, who gave life to Jesus in Mary's womb? Allah, right? But more specifically, the Spirit. Did you remember in the previous session? Allah sent His Spirit right. to give Mary a son. He breathed the Spirit into Mary. She got pregnant. So the Muslims are left with one of two choices. Either Allah is the father of Jesus because He's the one who gave life to, to Jesus in his mother's womb without sex. We're not saying it was sexual because to the Christian, it's just as blasphemous as it is to the Muslim to say that Allah would have sex. But still, he's responsible for the life of Jesus, for that conception taking place. Or it's actually the Spirit who is the Father of Jesus. That's right. Because who actually caused Mary to get pregnant without sexual intercourse? That's the Spirit. And you know, brother, this is a heavy topic that 
will require at least one more session yes, to unpack. So thank you again for the awesome work that uh, you do for the uh, for the Lord and your work in the kingdom. And hopefully everybody's <laughs> enjoying uh, this series that we have titled uh, Tawheed Dilemma, part of our new uh, video series, Let Us Reason. Until we meet again, have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Also hit the bell so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sira International. And together we can introduce Muslims to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you.